eighth generation Honda Accord. Don't forget to check the video description. I'll have links to everything that I'm using. Jack up the front of the vehicle. So you're gonna need a jack and I recommend buying a high quality jack like this Daytona 3-ton low profile long reach jack. It goes really high off the ground. So it's useful for vehicles that are lower to the ground. So as you can see, I'm just aligning it with the symbol on the front, the Honda symbol and pushing it in as far as I can. Once I'm underneath the car, you're gonna look for this sort of bulge or nodule and you're gonna line up the Daytona. You can use the pedal to lift the jack up just enough to have it seated against the nodule like so but then you're gonna to have to chalk the wheels in the back before you actually start jacking the vehicle up. So these chocks are pretty, you know, simple, cheap. You can get them anywhere. Just make sure that it's fully flush to the back of the tires and the car is in park. Then you can start jacking up your vehicle. Now I'm gonna go faster through this video just cause it takes a while to get it fully up there. But this is just to show you how easy it is to jack up your Honda pretty high off the ground. So next you're going to want some high quality jacks. These are US jacks and you're going to put them underneath the jacking points on the sides of the car. And you can see I'm aligning it so that the jacking point is like in the valley of the jack and then I can lower the vehicle onto the jack stands very gingerly like so. And once it's fully rested on those jack stands, what you're going to want to do is push the sides of the vehicle to make sure it's secure. So just give it a push on both sides. You may hear some noises just as it's settling into those jack stands. Jack up the back of the vehicle. So you're gonna to wanna to take those chocks out from behind. Might be a little difficult, but you'll see this uh, hitch in the back. That's where you're going to jack the vehicle up. And again, you're just gonna align your jack underneath it. And we'll go through this pretty quickly, but you can see I just put the jacks in, I've aligned them underneath the jacking points and made sure that it's sort of aligned with the valleys inside those jack stands. And again, I'm just going to lower it onto the jack stands like so. And you're gonna do the same thing, you're gonna push the corners and make sure the vehicle's secure. And do use a level to make sure the car is actually level. Automatic transmission fluid, cold drain and fill. So you're gonna to wanna to pan to catch the fluid, a crush washer for the bolt and ATF, automatic transmission fluid. I'm gonna use Triax because it works on 98% of all automatic transmissions. And I just prefer it over the Honda Genuine, but you can use that too. Let's look underneath the hood. What we're looking for is the transmission fluid dipstick. A lot of vehicles no longer have this, but this generation Honda Accord does have a fluid dipstick for the transmission. And this is a huge advantage to you because it allows you to easily change out your fluid. Now, some people tell you that you don't have to change it out, but that isn't true. Now we're gonna use a breaker bar. This is a 3 8 breaker bar. And we're also gonna have our handy dandy torque wrench. We're gonna need both of these to do this job. Now, when you open up the torque wrench, this is a tecton, you'll have to spin the bottom to sort of release the pressure and allow you to torque it and store it at 10 foot pounds. Don't forget to do that. Automatic transmission fluid, cold drain process. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my 3 8 breaker bar and put it into the bolt and I'm just gonna pull on it until it breaks, until I feel the bolt give way. And it may take a lot of strength for you to do this, but just make sure that you get a decent breaker bar. Then you can hand loosen it. And the fluid's gonna come out pretty quick, so make sure you have that pan in the right location. You'll notice that I actually cut into the shielding so that I could do cold drain and fills whenever I want without having to remove the shielding. But if you do wanna remove the shielding, just go ahead and get a decent tool to remove the clips. And I think there are several that you're gonna to have to account for. So now let's go ahead and clean the end of the bolt. If you see any metal shavings there, that means that your transmission is getting some wear on it. I don't have any, any shavings on the end of mine, which basically tells me that my Triax ETF is doing its job. Now what you can do is you can pull up 
on the dipstick to try to get as much fluid out as fast as possible. But don't do this until after the fluid has already started draining or it'll gush all over the floor. Now, we're gonna look at the old crush washer and compare it to the new one. So, as you can see, the old crush washer looks quite different from the new one. I always recommend that you replace with a new crush washer, no matter what. Now, this is not done yet. It may look like it's done, but it's not done until it's dripping. You got a nice drip like that. That's when you know you're done. So then you're gonna go ahead and put the bolt back on with a new crush washer. You're just gonna hand tighten it, and then you will use your torque wrench to fully tighten it to spec. Also, make sure you wear gloves. This can be a pretty sticky and slimy uh, job. So remember, we're using the torque wrench, so we want to loosen it on the bottom so that we can get the correct torque settings. And this is going to be 36 foot-pounds. And you're just going to put the 3 8 torque wrench on there, and you're going to give it a nice push until you feel a click, and you can do an extra click just for insurance. And then you're done, it's on. Clean up after you're done with your rag, mechanic towel, or blue towel. ATF cold fill process. So we've got the old fluid and we've got a measuring bucket. Now the reason that getting cold fluid out is so important is because ATF, when it gets warm, expands. So if you had taken it out of this engine when it was warm, it may actually show more quarts, like three and a half or four. And then you're putting in too much ATF into the engine. So that's why the cold drain and fill process is very important so that you get the exact amount out that you put in. That way you don't have to do a bunch of after adjustments to your fluid. So I've just got a funnel and I've got this double valved measuring cup, which is sort of useful. The main reason I wanted to show it to you is that it does have a one quarter mark. It has a lid and it has two valves, which can be handy. But in this case, we're just going to use a blue valve just to control it when we want to empty it into the funnel. And again, we've got that dipstick down there. We're going to pull it out and then we're going to stick our funnel in there. If you do have another tool that can do one quart, just use that instead. But I do like the fact that this tool has two valves if I'm doing something where I have to really control the flow. Now what I like to do is cut the aluminum foil halfway through and then peel off the aluminum foil so that I can have a controlled way of pouring the fluid. This is especially useful when you're doing an oil change. With ATF, with measuring cups, it's not as important except that it just prevents some spillage from occurring. Now remember, we're putting three quarts in, so you can do this any way you want. I'm gonna do it sort of a slow measured way so you can see that I'm doing three full quarts. But basically you just put the cap on it, open up that blue valve and empty it in. Remember, I'm showing you a drain and fill process that is just really one cycle. You should do three cycles of this, the drain and fill process, if you want to fully flush of all of the ATF. I personally like to do a different process. I like to do a drain and fill when I do my yearly oil change. And so after three or so oil changes where I do a drain and fill, all my fluid has been replaced in my engine. Now, if you don't wanna take that sort of measured approach, you could do this process three times in a row, just making sure that the engine gets cold enough for you to do the process over again. You can do that, you just need to make sure you drive the car enough on the highway to get the engine warm enough so that the fluid gets in the, the torque converter. But I like the lazier approach where I just do a drain and fill when I do an oil change once a year, and then after three years, I've replaced all of the ATF in my engine. That is totally up to you though. This video is to show you how to do one drain and fill. So as the final step on the third quart, I'm gonna add loop guard. It's basically a universal ATF protectant just gives the triax or the ATF a little bit more of a boost. And it's gonna call for seven fluid ounces of it. I used a 20 ounce bottle and marked off the fluid ounces because I ran out of measuring cups. So there you go, that's innovation. So I just open up the blue valve on the third and final quart of the cold drain and fill fluid. 
that we are replacing. And as it's draining, then I will add the loop guard to the top. So if you decide to just do it yearly like I do, and then after the third year, you're pretty much done, that, that fluid will be good for like 80,000 miles. You can do it that way. If you want to do this in succession and basically drive the car around enough to get the fluid throughout the engine and then pull it back in the garage and get it cold, just remember don't replace that crush washer on your trans bolt until the final step. And don't add the lube guard until the final step, the final third cycle of your drain and fill. Remember to clean up all your stuff and, and put the uh, dipstick back in. ATF cleanup process. Make sure to dispose of your used ATF fluid in the responsible way. You can pour it in with your funnel into your old ATF container, or if you have an old oil container, you can do that too. Just make sure you securely fasten it. And then of course, clean up any of the fluid that's on the floor or around because animals can eat it and get really sick or die. If your town or city offers it, put it into a container at the curb and have it picked up or AutoZone. Remember to repeat the cold drain and fill three times to get a fully flushed system. If you decide to do this in a single day, remember you have to get the engine cold before you do the next cold drain and fill. I recommend that you just do this with your yearly oil change. And if you do it that way, then the ATF has a longer amount of time to clean the system thoroughly, especially if you use the lube guard. And then you'll be at a point where you don't have to do it for another 80,000 miles. Don't forget to drive the vehicle around and while the engine is warm, check the dipstick and make sure your levels are good.